Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dokonic here, and today we're going to be going over the new Dokken Awakenings for the two great apes, the Fasha and the Bardock, on top of the new Dokken Awakening for the free-to-play trunks. Hey guys, if you're enjoying the content that I provide here on my channel, don't forget to hit that like button, and also don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications, that way you get the most recent and up-to-date information about Dragon Ball Z Dokken Battle delivered directly to you. Thank you, enjoy the video, and have a great day. Alright, so let's go ahead and start off with the Fasha. Exquisite Assault Fasha Giant 8, or Great 8. Her leader skill is Key plus 3 when HP is 50% or above. Her super attack is Energy Bullet, causes supreme damage to the enemy. Passive skill is Perfect Move, changes Intelligence Key Sphere to Strength Key Spheres, and may turn into a Giant 8. But passive skill is really good, by the way, so she's a really good card, or at least a Giant 8 to have. She's one of the only few that I would actually consider running on a team regularly, just because of that Key Sphere changing. Uh, most likely for World Tournament for LR Broly if you have him. Link skills are Saiyan Warrior Race, Team Bardock, Saiyan Pride, Battlefield Diva, the Saiyan Lineage Transform, and Saiyan Roar. Uh, max stats are HP of 7129, Attack of 7501, and Defense of 4248. She has a chance to turn into Grade 8. And what this means is you will have the ability, at some point, a random choice, it's RNG, to turn into a Grade 8, in which you cannot take any damage, you have a great ape that takes the entire field for a sentiment world for a RNG based amount of time. It can either be one turn, two turns, three turns. Uh, every turn has a chance of, of reverting back. Uh, causes, it has a different uh, multiplier, super attack multiplier. I could not find for the life of me anything about the damage multiplier here. It says causes destructive damage to the enemy. Now, I have no idea if any of you who are watching this video have a link or anything that t talks about what destructive damage multiplier is. Please let me know because I'm not aware of it. But it causes destructive damage to the enemy, and the base attack is at 30,000. So it's just, you're essentially just doing a, a lot of damage towards the opponent. They cannot harm you whatsoever. It keeps you alive in the round for however long. Again, it's RNG based, so it's not that great in terms of banking on it to go off. Uh, the other thing is, in this part of it, they can only grow, go great ape one time in the battle. Um, but you go multiple times per stage. So after you finish one battle, you go to the next battle. They have a chance again. It resets at every single um, at every single different battle that you have, uh, not the stages within the battle. Though I just wanted to make that clear. Anyway, she gets a Doken Awakening, um, and she Doken Awakens with medals from the old school Alone Warriors last battle. That's the base form Bardock event where you drop the rare Bardock free to play. Um, she is farm that medal is farmable on the first stage, level one. Go Team Bardock. Now you're going to have to play it on either hard or Z-hard. And you're going to have to look for the Fasha. When you find the Fasha, you're going to want to battle her. And more than likely, there's going to be a gold capsule, two spaces after her. And that is where you're going to pick up your medals. You fight her, you need to have at least a number two um, uh, dice, essentially. And you're going to need to jump onto that gold capsule. Uh, I have, I believe originally they dropped the medals and then once in a while they would have the gold capsules. Now it looks like every time I grinded out the stage, there was always a gold capsule there. So yeah, go ahead and just grab those gold capsules. Uh, that's where you're going to get hers. Now, we do have other great apes. Unfortunately, they don't have Doken Awakenings at this time, but my assumption would be that the medals are going to come from this event as well. So if you want to, you know, try to jump on it beforehand, go ahead and grind out all the medals for each one, I believe. It takes five, yeah, it takes five for Fasha, and when we go over the Bardock, it takes five for him. So if you want to go ahead and grind out five of each of the other medals to Doken Awaken them, by all means, go ahead and Doken Awaken. We'll get the medals so that way, because the, the, the chances are of them Doken Awaken with those medals is pretty high. Anyway, you're going to go ahead and grab those medals for Fasha, and she Doken Awakens into Colossal Woman Warrior, Fasha Giant 8. Man, it makes, me, it makes her sound like a damn Amazon. <laughs> Uh, leader skill is key plus three attack and defense plus 30 percent when hp is 30 percent or above super attack energy bullet causes supreme damage to the enemy and all allies plus 20 percent for one round all right you know it's still not bad i guess uh the, the key changing again is going to be really good i guess if you're running her next to an, uh, an lr broly you put her in front of him i don't know why you would ever need that much op from broly but you could throw her in front of broly have her launch her super attack and then if you know if you can get her to do that without using up all the key spheres that she changed for him and then he goes and he should be able to do a lot of freaking damage the passive skill perfect move changes intelligence key sphere to strength key sphere as normal attack and defense plus 30 percent not really that great just because she's not really a, a damage output unit she's more there as a support unit but you know what whatever she at least gets a little bit of a buff for herself she's doing a little bit more damage and she has a chance to turn into the great ape two times now so 
that by itself a little bit better a little bit more viable i wish the they increased the chance of her to be able to turn into a great ape now i haven't confirmed this whatsoever but apparently and i don't want to give you guys false information whatsoever but i read a couple posts that said that you that the chances of them turning into a great ape uh, goes up with every round that they're on the field now, i don't know if that's true or not uh, but that might be true and if that is true then you will have if it's a longer winded battle you might this might be a little bit better for you I, I don't know again it all depends on who you're running and what you have and what's more optimal for you her link skill she gains shattering the limit everything else is the same same warrior race team bardock same pride that battlefield diva transform and same roar her max stats are hp of 90 21 attack of 79 48 and defense of 47 15 that defense is a little bit on the higher side i would say she has a 12 key multiplier of 140 percent and unfortunately, her great ape form is the same as it was before. Attack of 30,000, and the defense and HP doesn't matter because they're both infinite. Because it doesn't matter, no one's doing any damage to you. So she has the same attack of 30,000. So the, I, I, a little bit upset that those great apes didn't get a buff either, but whatever. I mean, again, if you guys know anything about the destructive damage, let me know. The next one is going to be the Frontline Battle Bardock Giant Ape. His leader skill is all types HP and attack plus 20%. His super attack is final spear cannon causes supreme damage to the enemy. His passive skill is battle expert. Attack plus 70% when HP is 30% or above may turn into the great ape. And link skills are Saiyan warrior race, the Saiyan lineage, team bardock, Saiyan pride, transform, and Saiyan roar. Max stats are HP of 7680, attack of 7848, and defense of 3539. And he transforms into the Great Up as well. Uh, same thing as the Fossil Destructive Damage. And his attack is actually 35,000, not 30,000. It's a little bit higher than uh, Fosha's. He has a 12 key multiplier of 135%. And if I forgot to mention it before, Fosha's first form is also 135% for the 12 key multiplier. Now, Bardock Doken Awakens with five Frieza medals from the same exact event. That is a Lone Warrior's Last Battle, and those Frieza medals are available on Stage 6, or Level 6, the Last Battle. Now, um, I would recommend going up against it on Z-Hard, because this is such an old-school event. This is one of the original events, so going after this event with any kind of, any new meta card, even if you only have one new meta card, you'll be able to, to, to just destroy this event. Anyway, you're going up against an Agility Frieza at this form. It's the Embodiment of Evil Frieza. Uh, you have a chance to drop that Embodiment of Evil, Evil Frieza card and the uh, the Bardock card as well. So if you want to grind them up, go feel free to go ahead and do that. The first form Frieza, the one, he's also available on level 5. And he does Doken Awake into a decent character if you saw my LR Frieza event video. This is where you're going to grab him. Anyway, the um, event medal here is what you're looking for. And that's where the Frieza medals drop. So you just need to grab 5 of them. He Doken Awakens into infamous low-class warrior Bardock Giant 8. His new leader skill is all types, HP and attack plus 50%. His super attack is final spirit cannon. Cause greatly raises attack for one round. Causes supreme damage to the enemy. So that's actually interesting. I didn't read that before. I didn't know about that. So that, that's good to know. I would like to see how powerful he gets. I'm going to have to wait the global side. Global side I have him on the JP side. I don't. His passive skill of battle, expert, attack plus 100% when HP is 30% or above. May turn into a grade 8 twice. So there you go. You have that again. But attack plus 100%. Honestly, he's probably going to be someone... I don't want to say to always run him. He doesn't really have... So let's go over his link skills real quick. Saiyan Warrior Race, the Saiyan Lineage, Team Bardock, Saiyan Pride, Transform, Saiyan Roar, and Shattering the Limit. All right, so... I mean, other than Saiyan Warrior Race, he's really not too viable because you have a lot of Super Saiyan 3s you're going to be running on that team, assuming you have all the optimal units. But if you don't, holy crap, attack plus 100% and greatly raises attack for one round, causes supreme damage to the enemy. He's probably going to be hitting pretty fucking hard, man. Sorry for cursing, but man, he's going to be hitting really hard. Um, holy crap. Uh, anyway, max stats are HP of 9481, attack of 8316, and defense of 4025. Transformation is the same as the last one, attack of 35,000, destructive damage to the enemy. So that's pretty freaking cool. He looks like a cool card. I would consider running him on a team normally, uh, assuming I didn't have better units that link well together. Um, outside of that, so let's move on to the free-to-play trunks. We're going to start off with his base form, Roar of Sadness and Rage, Trunks, Youth, Future. Now, this is the base form. I'm not going to go over the card sets of hint this one or the Super Saiyan one that he dokens into. Uh, now, this one is grindable from the event Fight Against Despair, or Hope Fight Against Despair. He has a whole bunch of medals you need to grind. You have the Android 17 medals, Android 18 medals, the uh, Super Vegeta medals, the Cell First Form medals, and the Gohan medals. You're going to need 10 of the Android 17 and Vegeta and Cell medals, and then 8 of the Android 18 and Gohan medals. All those are sprinkled throughout the event. You have the Gohan medals on level 4. You have the Android medals on level 6. 
uh, Vegeta Metal, Super Vegeta Metal's on level 7, you have the Cell Metal on level 8, and you have, that's it. That's all the medals. <laughs> anyway, um, so after you get all those medals and you grind him out to Super Attack 10, he Doken Awakens into the Future Changer Super Saiyan Trunks for the future. Now if you're 100% free to play, um, I would actually recommend getting him up to, you know, maybe getting one of his dupe pass on. I'm not telling you to actually do this because you'd rather use your dupe, your actual dupe pass on better units. But, I mean, if you are really going free to play and you're not going to be pulling on any banners and you just use your stones for that, this card would definitely be worth duping out. Um, that would be my recommendation. Anyway, he Doken Awakens with 35 medals from the Rage, Trunks, Event, Miracle, Sword of Light, and he Doken Awakens into a new future Super Saiyan Trunks future. His new leader skill is Intelligence, HP, Attack, and Defense plus 70%, so he is a, almost a demigod leader, essentially. Um, he has a super attack, heat dome attack causes supreme damage to the enemy, now he's doing supreme damage, which, for free to play unit, holy crap. Passive skill, peace for the future, attack plus 70% when facing two or less enemies. So, I mean, when, I mean, there's not that many times in the actual game where you're not going to be facing, you know, two or more enemies. Uh, or, sorry, three or more enemies, because it's when facing two or less, so one or two enemies. Anyway, his link skills are Golden Warrior, the Saiyan Lineage, Super Saiyan, the Vegeta Family, Prepared for Battle, Dismal Future, and Fierce Battle. So he gets the Fierce Battle link. So he's really good to run on an intelligence, super intelligence team, um, or on a super team in general. The Fierce Battle link makes him link with all the Dokken exclusives, if you get them Dokken Awakened. And he has Prepared for Battle, which is a really good Super Saiyan link. Well, it's just a Saiyan link in general, but you know what I mean. It's good for the Saiyan. He also has Super Saiyan and Golden Warrior, so that's an attack buff and a key buff. And if you have Vegeta on the team, then you have the Vegeta Family Link. So, I mean, he's not bad. And the Saiyan lineage is more Vegeta-specific, because I, no one else really has him. There are a couple characters that do have him outside of that, outside of Vegeta, but more relevant. Outside of that, one link and Dismal Future, those are the only two links that he has that aren't really as relevant. So he's a pretty freaking good free-to-play unit, especially with that Supreme Damage modifier now. Anyway, max stats are HP of 8010, attack of 7526, and defense of 4338. So yeah, definitely get this guy up to Super Attack 10, and if you are a true free-to-play without summoning on anything, definitely dupe, dupe him up. He's definitely going to be worth the dupe. Um, if not, and you just want him, he's just a really good unit to have on Super Attack 10. But that's it, guys. That's my review of all these cards. Stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a World Tournament 20 review for the JP side at some point soon. Uh, I wanted to wait to, for it to be released. It just got released recently. Um, I know that they're doing a 30-time multiplier now, so that's pretty interesting. So I'm going to be covering that, the card, and all, everything else in there on top of all the rewards. Uh, but hit that sub button if you're new here. I appreciate you taking the time to stop by, watch the video, and, and I will catch you later.